Okay, I'm going to give a quick flyby tour of the solar system using NASA's accessible in a web browser virtual ORI called Eyes on the Solar System. I'm going to go ahead and load the ORI up, and we can see here a lot of different um, types of objects within our solar system are represented here in real time uh, using real data. Um, and so this is our solar system as I'm recording this right now, and we can see these outer planets, Neptune and Uranus. We see Saturn and Jupiter. We see a comet here. Um, there's some asteroids like Temple One, Vesta, Eros, Ceres. Um, then we see these inner planets. And we also have here represented some current NASA missions. These are space probes that are either orbiting the sun or planets, or um, in some cases, um, planetary moons. Um, and sending data back about the solar system to NASA scientists and other scientists on Earth. Um, we really want to focus, though, not on the designed objects so much, but on the natural objects in the solar system, of course, starting with the sun. Um, and we can um, go from the sun and sort of make our way out towards the outer reaches of the solar system. So we could go to Mercury, for example, the most inner planet in the solar system. Um, and there's a lot of information available here about Mercury. We have n really nice visualizations using data from various NASA space probes that have been used to collect um, imagery and other information about Mercury. Um, we can see some other information, like there's no moons on Mercury. Um, another thing that is pretty clear, I think, from the images um, um, and we can also see it here is it's a terrestrial planet. In other words, it's a rocky planet, um, much like Earth, um, where its composition is largely um, rocky. Um, if we continue on our journey sort of from the sun out, um, uh, the next planet we would encounter would be Venus. And I'm just going to pop over to Venus this way. Um, Venus is also a terrestrial planet. It also has zero moons. Um, and, um, of course, it's also interior to the sun's orbit, uh, to the Earth's orbit of the sun, excuse me. Um, and let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit more here. Oh, off of Venus. Venus, I, I see Mars in its orbit here. I suspect that blue one is Earth. Yes, it is. So we have Earth here, a planet that we're all pretty intimately familiar with. Um, and then outside of Earth's orbit is um, uh, Mars. Um, and Mars, like Mercury, Venus, and the Earth, is a terrestrial planet. Um, it has actually two moons, um, smaller than Earth's moons, but it does have two moons. There they are, uh, Phobos and, and Deimos. Um, we can actually check these out. Oh, that's interesting. I noticed that unlike all of the planets that we've seen so far and Earth's moon, this moon actually doesn't have um, that spherical shape. I, I'm noticing that most of these objects have spherical shapes, but some of these smaller ones like Deimos here, um, one of the moons of, of Mars, uh, a little bit uh, oddly shaped, not, not, don't, don't have that perfect sphere. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is just kind of observe in uh, a little bit of a, a sped up fashion the, the motion of, um, of these planets, these inner planets that we just looked at. Uh, and I'm going to do that by zooming out. I can actually click on the inner solar system here. I'm going to click six times on my date here so I can speed things up. And we're just going to see if we notice any patterns as... Um, as we experience the solar system in a kind of fast forward way. Um, one thing that I'm noticing uh, straight away is that everything, all of these um, planets, inner planets, uh, and I see Jupiter and some of these asteroids are behaving in the same way, are rotating in the same direction um, around the sun. That's from this perspective, a counterclockwise direction. Um, and so that's, that's interesting. Another thing I notice, I'm gonna sort of pause this here, but I noticed that the pathways of the orbits of these various planets and asteroids, which we'll see in just a second, are not exactly lined up on the same plane. 
but they do seem to be fairly um, similar in terms of the two-dimensional plane that they're orbiting the sun in. Um, so in other words, it's almost flat, not perfectly flat, of course, but it's almost flat. We don't have many objects or any objects that we can see here orbiting in a way that isn't with, within somewhere close to the same plane that the Earth orbits the sun, somewhere close to that. Again, not exactly that plane, but somewhere close to it. So that's also interesting. Let's take a look at some asteroids. I have at least three visible, four, I think, in my view here. They all are asteroids in what's referred to as the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And none of them are particularly close to one another. I think one of the biggest ones here is Vesta. If I click on Vesta, and I think we may have seen earlier that Vesta's size is actually quite a bit smaller than Earth or the um, uh, Earth's moon. Um, and we can see again, it doesn't have that perfectly spherical shape that um, many of the other objects that we've seen, the planets, the Earth's moon have. Um, so that's interesting. Um, it, it, it's referred to here as a protoplanet. It looks to me like it's rocky or terrestrial, uh, similar to Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, um, and the moons of Mars and the Earth. Um, and if we look at, if we speed up time, we can kind of look maybe a little bit at its orbit, although I think I probably want a different orientation here. Um, Vesta is orbiting, and if I actually, I'll be able to see it better if I take a look at this perspective, Vesta is orbiting uh, similar to these other objects that we've seen in this counterclockwise orientation from this perspective. All right, let's continue on beyond this asteroid belt into um, the next major object in the solar system, which is Jupiter, the largest planet. I'll go ahead and click on Jupiter. Jupiter, one of the things I notice as it's loading um, right away is that Jupiter is spherical. Um, it's similar to Mars, Mercury, the Earth, the Moon, Venus, um, Jupiter takes on that spherical shape. There we go. Uh, really um, beautiful images of um, Jupiter. And one of the things that I notice right away is that Jupiter is not terrestrial. Its main composition is actually gases. You can kind of see that in the swirling shapes on Jupiter's surface. Um, another thing about Jupiter is that it has many moons. So we have the four Galilean moons represented here. There are others. Um, I'm going to go ahead and speed up my Ori again so we can see how the moons of Jupiter orbit. Uh, oh, and once again, they're, they're all orbiting in the same direction. It's that counterclockwise perspective again from, uh, or from this perspective, it's counterclockwise. So that's interesting. Um, and we can see some patterns as well here that I think fit some patterns we may have seen earlier with the speed of the orbit of objects that are orbiting um, and how close they are to the object that they're orbiting. So Io, the moon, the major moon that's closest to Jupiter is orbiting uh, more quickly than Europa, which is orbiting more quickly um, than the other outer moons. We also saw an interesting uh, oddball uh, moon come up. Oh, that wasn't a moon. That was actually a NASA mission, Juno, um, which is in the process of orbiting Jupiter in a some, somewhat unusual orbit. This was designed by NASA to gather information not only about Jupiter, but about um, some of uh, Jupiter's moons as well. If I continue out in the solar system, and I'll go, go ahead and take another view here, um, we'll see there are, um, the, the next planet out will be Saturn. Saturn, similar to Jupiter, is a gas giant. It has this ring system uh, that it's famous for, uh, many moons. And we can take a look at the moons of 
Saturn um, in this perspective. Let's take a look at how they're orbiting Saturn. Oh, that's interesting. The vast, all of these inner moons are orbiting Saturn in this um, same counterclockwise direction. We have one oddball here in Phoebe, um, but that seems to be an exception to a rule in terms of the um, orientate or the direction of orbit of all of the objects that we've seen so far in in the in the solar system. I'm going to go ahead and go back to our perspective of the solar system as a whole. We have a few more planets out here and um, some other objects beyond those. So if we take a look at Uranus, um, Uranus is actually, uh, unlike Jupiter and Saturn, not composed of gases. Um, it's ice, um, which is interesting, uh, referred to as an ice giant, not rocky like those inner planets, but somehow a uh, different composition than, than Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, we can see that like Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus also has moons. Let's take a look at those represented here. And yeah, let's go ahead and see how those moons orbit Saturn. Really interesting here, another exception to the, um, another set of exceptions to our our orbits that are in um, that counterclockwise direction. These are, the, the, the moons of Uranus are actually orbiting in the clockwise direction. Um, another thing that I might um, observe here, um, about Uranus is um, that it has a very long year, um, 84 Earth's years, and I think we've looked at these patterns um, around the length of years already, but um, yeah, so these are really unusual, um, these moons of Uranus, they're not orbiting exactly in the um, plane that I was talking about earlier, that we were observing earlier, um, that most of the other objects in the solar system seem to be orbiting in. Uh, now, Uranus itself orbits more or less in that plane. We might get a pers better perspective by looking at it from here. We can see Uranus more or less in that same plane as the other planets, but its moons oddly um, have a different a different pattern. Let's take a look at the furthest planet from the sun, Neptune. Neptune, also an ice giant, uh, also has some moons. We can take a look at the Neptune system here. Um, and I want to give ourselves perspective on the sun. There's the sun. And we can see, oh, these two means of moons of Neptune oddly orbiting in different directions. That's not the typical pattern that we see. Uh, Triton is orbiting in that kind of clockwise, that surprising clockwise direction, not exactly in that same plane. Uh, Proteus, uh, a little bit closer to Neptune, we can see is orbiting more quickly. It's also closer to that plane and orbiting in that counterclockwise direction. All right, let's wrap up this tour of the solar system by taking a look at some of these objects that are further out from Neptune. None of these are quite as uh, large as um, the other planets that we've noticed. Uh, this one is pretty well known, Pluto, uh, was at one time considered a planet, uh, now considered a dwarf planet, um, and it is, um, you know, very far from the sun and has a takes a very long time to um, to make a complete orbit of the sun. But it also has moons. Um, so one is visible here, the largest moon of Pluto, uh, Charon, um, and. Um, there's some other objects um, out here uh, past Neptune as well. Uh, one thing that most of them have in common, though not all of them, is that they are orbiting 
the sun roughly in, although it becomes a little bit less so the case, in, in, in that plane and in that counterclockwise direction uh, from the perspective that we have here. Um, all right, so there's a tour of the solar system. Hopefully you're able to record some patterns that we've noticed or that you've noticed um, and um, have some questions about how, how we can explain those patterns.